Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Craig Wiggins. It is 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I think it's still daylight time. And uh, this is the XAPI Community Practice and Profiles Group monthly meeting uh, for the month of August. This is probably going to be pretty quick, mostly posted for information for people who are looking to get involved in uh, the community's practice. So those of you who are in attendance right now, uh, we'll probably just go through this pretty quickly. This will be a short meeting. If you have any questions, uh, please throw them into the question box and I'll, I'll try to jump into them as we go through this. But uh, let's get the stuff out of the way so we can get to the updates. So um, that's me on the right. I think Jason Haig is not here today, but uh, he's normally able to be contacted, especially in regards to the uh, vocabulary working group, which we'll mention in passing in this session. So um, if you've not done so already, please check out the XAPI Community of Practice and Profiles Google group, which may have led you. Uh, to this recording. If so, welcome. Um, e, you should also check out the XAPI Community of Practice directory. Um, we are in the process of uh, updating the adlnet.gov website, so things will be moved around probably pretty soon, but that Community of Practice directory will be available at that URL, at least for um, the foreseeable future. If you've not done so already, also check out the XAPI Specification Google Group. Uh, the group that is associated with that meets every um, I meet every Wednesday at uh, about 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m., uh, discuss the actual specification. Um, speaking of which, you should also check out the XAPI specification itself, which is available via GitHub, um, as are ADL XAPI resources. Um, some of you are already familiar with the XAPI Design Google Group, uh, home of the XAPI Community of Practice. So we are, um, we'll be probably getting back to that pretty soon, hopefully. Uh, to talk about the next season of the design cohort, uh, when and if that should be happening. <clears throat> and finally, um, please be sure to check the XAPI Vocabulary uh, Working Group that's run by my colleague Jason Haig. And uh, they've had some pretty interesting meetings lately, and maybe we'll touch on that later in this meeting today. All right, so uh, just to let everyone know, uh, as per usual, we are recording this session, so that I can post it to the ADL uh, YouTube account for uh, viewing later. So those of you who are on right now, if you're not comfortable with being recorded, that's uh, that's probably a problem. So I apologize. All right. So for those of you who do not know what this is, which I think is no one, I think no one actually on this call does not know what this is. But for those of you watching at home um, later, the ba the basics of the XAPI communities of practice and profile are to uh, generate best practices and requirements for creating uh, actual communities of practice communities of practice. Pardon me around XAPI. Um, to identify design profiles or, or use cases associated with uh, using XAPI in particular domains, and then to standardize how XAPI statements are expressed for each type of domain profile. Um, you might hear the term recipes at times used to refer to domain profiles, so um, don't get confused if you hear that. So let's jump right into the updates. Again, um, this will be pretty quick. This will just be uh, information for people who are looking to catch up on these communities of practice. And there are a couple people in attendance right now that I'll jump to uh, in case we need to. Okay. Uh, first would be the social collaboration, <clears throat> pardon me, social collaboration community of practice. They meet the first Friday of every month. I believe they met on the 7th of um, the 7th of this month of August. Uh, Aditi Gandhi uh, of IBM is the uh, contact for this uh, community of practice. The uh, home Google Plus group uh, URL is available on screen. Um, and as are a few resources, including the actual Google group itself and a few vocabulary drafts associated with LinkedIn and a few other um, uh, social media uh, platforms. So uh, in the last meeting, it looks like they uh, reviewed some recipes uh, and verbs from LinkedIn, uh, looked at some open source applications such as ELGG and pump.io, and are working, uh, I believe they're working on verb um, vocabulary listings for Facebook and for SharePoint. Um, someone submitted in the Google Plus group a connected learning recipe. Um, I think that was from Christy Kitto, um, if you guys have heard of her. And there has been a recent inquiry, and I don't know if it's made it into this group or not, but it's something that probably should make it in front of it. Um, the there is a um, there was a article, or at least a mention, um, of using Saltbox to uh, connect a uh, GU's uh, XAPI with Yammer. 
So um, I've linked that in the presentation here. You guys can, uh, this will be available online in the uh, notes for the video uh, on our YouTube page, so check that out. Um, but we're looking to see if there's any anything to that. Uh, we're also working on, this is something I'd like to do, is expand the vocabulary listing for a few other social media platforms. I have volunteered to do it for Reddit. I should probably get that done soon. Anyway, if you have any questions, please contact Aditi Gandhi at the uh, contact information on screen. Uh, the ebook or actual, actionable data book community of practice. That doesn't look like anybody. Oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to take that back. Uh, Ian Gibson, who has been associated with that group, is available right now. Um, Ian, I'm going to unmute you just in case you have any updates regarding this uh, community of practice. Hey, hi, folks. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, all right. I've got a brand new uh, uh, webcam come mic here, so. Oh, it sounds pretty good. First time it's ever been used, so it's nice <laughs> if it works. Um, yeah, we, um, the uh, e-book uh, group uh, had a bit of a hiatus for a couple of weeks with uh, summer holidays and things, yeah. I think. But uh, they'll be getting back into uh, gear um, as of, I think, last Friday and this Friday. I mean, I had to miss uh, last week's meeting, but um, they've um, had some new kind of uh, um, guidance from the IEEE uh, overseers, you know, and um, in fact, part of that has um, been a, an allocation of a bit more money, I think, mm. uh, and an appreciation for the amount of practical work that uh, is going on. Um, the uh, Apparently, out of all the sort of study groups and design groups, uh, this one's actually produced more uh, practical results, and this has come to the attention of the uh, IEEE industry standards people. Good, good. Yeah, I stopped into the uh, to this past week's meeting, but I unfortunately had to uh, jump from that to another meeting. Um, I've got a link to the notes associated with uh, last week's meeting, or yes, this past week's meeting uh, at the bottom of the screen. And um, yeah, I, I want to echo what Ian said. Uh, if People are watching this uh, later now. Um, this community of practice associated with ebooks, uh, specifically the EPUB3 um, uh, format, uh, is very robust and has been. Um, I think the people associated with this group have been uh, veterans of the XAPI Design Cohort Group, which I which I helped lead, and um, and, a, and a few other things. So, uh, thanks for the update, Ian, and uh, looking forward to getting catching up in the next yeah. few weeks. On All right, our, uh, me too. All right then. Cool. All right, uh, moving on to the simulation community of practice. So this one is um, obviously dedicated to creating XAPI controlled vocabulary and design profiles for simulation interactions and activities. And I should always say at this point, and video games. And I say that only because I get this question every time I talk about the COP and talk about uh, simulations. Someone asks me if that includes video games, and I, I want to say yes. Um, although I don't know if that's been really broached right now. So the link to the uh, Google Plus Home is available on screen. I know that the group has not met recently, or at least I believe they've not met recently. Um, and I say this partially because I think I was supposed to lead one of the groups and I uh, ended up with a conflict. So I don't know if that, that meeting happened recently. So I need to catch up with Anthony Altieri and uh, Shelley blake Clock. I think both of them are going to be uh, in uh, at a conference that I'll be going to later this year. So hopefully I'll be able to catch up with them and possibly do, do a presentation from the road. But I think there's a lot to catch up on uh, particularly in the area of medical simulations. I know that, uh, in particular, Shelley blake Clock has been uh, involved in, um, in some of that work through a Global Cities uh, Challenge. So looking forward to hearing more from that group. Uh, I know that the medical education and healthware, uh, or healthcare, uh, community of practice is, continues to meet. Um, I know, that, uh, unfortunately, Valerie Smothers was not able to attend today. Um, however, uh, I do know one of the updates is that uh, our ADL's Tom Crichton uh, has drafted a gap analysis in, with regards to uh, XAPI for their uh, the project that they're doing for the, the, the VA, the, uh, uh, the Veterans Administration, um, uh, using, um, for using XAPI with uh, medical simulation. So that's pretty exciting. Um, it should lead to some strong guidelines for all the healthcare educators uh, looking to use XAPI. Uh, this group meets, again, pretty regularly, once a month, usually on Thursday. Uh, please contact Valerie Smothers uh, at the contact information you see on screen if you want to get in touch with her. 
And uh, if you want to attend a, uh, one of the meetings, uh, the meetings are really interesting. Uh, in the resources uh, that I have listed on screen, they connect to the uh, to the site that has a lot of the information. But again, if you want to attend this meeting, please contact Valerie Smothers first. Um, they're kind of a tight, well-oiled machine at this point. They're, they're not necessarily looking to um, just have people just drop in. They, they want to make sure that people are, are contributing. So uh, this is probably the oldest community of practice associated with XAPI, at least that I know of. So um, they're usually up to pretty good things. And uh, if you can't make a meeting, I definitely recommend that you uh, click the, um, the link that I have up there for home, um, which has a bunch of information as associated with their, their thinking on the subject. So that's a good template for anybody getting started in, in trying to make, trying to work on their own domain. All right, uh, the video uh, community of practice. Now I could talk about this, but it looks like Pankaj Agrawal, who is leading that group, is here, so I'm going to unmute him. Hey, Pankaj, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, so I, I saw that you guys met on, uh, actually, you guys met just a few, just last week, is that correct? Um, not last week, about, uh, I think, 10, 11 days back. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, uh, yes, we had a very in-depth uh, discussion last week in uh, last uh, meeting mm. uh, about how to handle uh, handle different aspects or different kind of events right and uh, what we uh, figured was that when we have events like uh, uh, events that uh, talk about states uh, for example uh, mute unmute or talk about uh, uh, the environment, for example, uh, the size of the player or the resolution that user is viewing on, right. or things like that. Uh, we figured that it might be best if we use a single verb. Uh, it could be something like interacted or modified. And uh, instead of having separate uh, verbs and separate uh, statements for each of these, we could have one verb and one verb go through along with all these states uh, at uh, at one go. So with one statement, we have all the data uh, regarding the environment and different states of the player. Uh, that was finalized on the last meeting. We could not decide on what verb to use. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if, uh, if this common platform of different COPs could help, uh, it might be best, or probably um, I might discuss with Jason. Uh, he might be able to help what verb would be best to use so that it doesn't conflict with other COPs or someone else using Cinder. Right. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed that you guys have been uh, speaking with other, or kind of keeping other COPs in mind when, uh, when doing your work. Yeah which I appreciate. I know that you guys were yeah. um, working with the uh, CMI 5 working yeah. at one point uh, to make sure that... Yeah, they, there, was a major, there was a major conflict uh, mm -hmm. with CMI 5 and uh, we were able to resolve that and uh, that would help uh, resolve conflicts with all other uh, COPs as well uh, with the CMI 5. Excellent. So, yes, yeah. Well, cool. Um, the, the, the information on screen, including the link to the Google group, uh, is valid, including the, the general information document. Although, I would definitely recommend uh, checking out the GitHub link, uh, the, the home link that is on screen. Um, I think I think the video community of practice, other than the CMI5 group, I think you were the only ones to use GitHub to organize um, uh, as, a, as an organization platform um, using the wiki function and uh, it works out really well. Um, yeah, I like the what CMI5 was doing so uh, I decided that it might be best uh, to copy that. Yeah, I like, I like stealing good ideas too. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, also um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Pankaj was one of the several, uh, was one of the several um, uh, re representatives from Communities of Practice who um, did a presentation at the XAPI uh, boot camp that was held, uh, gosh, a month ago, a little over a month ago now. So uh, I wanted to thank you again for that, Pankaj. Uh, that was helpful. And um, I'm going to include the link to the to all of this stuff uh, in the show notes when this video is available. So if you're watching this later, uh, viewer, you can check that out in the notes. Um, but yeah, thanks, Pankaj. 
Cool. All right. Um, on to the AR, augmented reality. So this group, the augmented reality group, they were also represented through the uh, uh, at the boot camp, but mostly for the people who were involved in the uh, the community. Of, or I'm sorry, the uh, design cohort uh, group. So that was uh, Scott Parker and Jason Stoswell, and they did a presentation, and I'll link to uh, at least in the larger uh, playlist uh, in the show notes. But um, the group that is supposed to meet, uh, I think they may be on hiatus. I know there is a there is an augmented reality group that is meeting um, uh, Fridolin, I think, is a, is, and, and Christine Perea are involved in that, but I don't know very much about it right now, uh, which is something I need to rectify. But if you're interested in what they've done so far, you should check out the link uh, associated with home uh, on screen and check out the Google Plus community. Oh, I think that may have dried up. Um, I think that may have dried up a, a couple months ago. I'd really like to get back involved with this concept. I think augmented reality and XAPI really do go well together, especially in the context of uh, performance improvement in industrial settings, which I think is something that Fridlin Wild is uh, in, involved in right now. Um, if you have any questions about that, check out the links that are on screen or, or email Jafis uh, at juxtopia.com and see you on screen. All right, so the badges community of practice. I don't think um, we, well, we did hear from uh, and, uh, Andrew Downs uh, from Rusticy Software and Watershed. Uh, he is involved in the, the XAPI Baptist uh, project, and um, he did a presentation at the boot camp, which is listed, I think, in the resources here on screen. Um, I'm not sure what that group is up to right now, but you can check out, uh, I guess, the most recent discussion about it in the open badges chat that they have available via Gitter. Um, I definitely recommend that. Or just check them out at the home link, um, which is also done through GitHub. So I guess that makes, uh, makes three. And moving directly on to Chinese language and culture. So uh, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to let Jesse talk about this. Hey, Jesse, how are you? Hi. Hi. How are you? I, I'm excellent. Thanks. Thank you. OK, so. Um... Um, we are making progress in Taipei City project slowly, yeah, but uh, yeah, progress is undergoing. So, right. and also uh, Chinese COP has arranged a series of webinar, and I really like to uh, thank uh, so Craig and Andy are here. Uh, they are all our uh, guest speaker. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's an, mm -hmm, thank you. And it's an interview style uh, talks to introduce SAPI and uh, long term. Uh, like Craig will introduce TOA, the whole region for uh, Chinese audience. And this audience will be uh, in China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, the old. Uh, Chinese area. Right. And I and this series will be continue uh, even after this year. And also, um, I like to take the chance to ask if we like to have a an um, face to face forum or like something like a book camp. Uh, when will be the uh, better timing for uh, Craig and Andy to like visit Taiwan or China. Oh, sure. Um, well, I would love to visit either Taiwan or China. Um, it, it, more to the point, I'd love to do that under the auspices of working with ADL. Um, we'll have to find out what our future plans are. I know that um, we've been looking to kind of spread XAPI or at least knowledge about XAPI to different places. Um, but I know I, we're still trying to figure out what our, to be frank, what our, our plans will be, um, where we'll be appearing around the world, if, if at all, uh, in 2016. Uh, so that's, that's a discussion we're having right now with our, with our leadership. So as soon as I know something, Jesse, I'll let, I'll let you know. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so as to kind of get uh, face, so we can meet face to face. But I, I understand um, it. You're right that it would be more helpful, you know, to to be uh, if we're talking about specific uh, specific issues or people want to show off things that they're working on or they want to kind of talk about 
uh, plans, it, it oftentimes works better, as, as you saw at the boot camp, it oftentimes works better if you can kind of talk to people face to face. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we hope the webinar series is a, 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 a warm up series to uh, raise the awareness yeah. of SAPI. Yeah. And then when it, when it, it's a, an appropriate time and we can have the forum. Uh, on locations that might be in Taiwan or China, not determined yet. Okay. Well, I, I'm definitely looking forward to 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 knowing more about that and hopefully hopefully participating. But yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to uh, participating in the X Talk series. And I, I'm 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 speaking for Andy, even though he's here, uh, so he could speak for himself. But I, I'm pretty sure he's excited about it too. Um, and I think yeah yeah thank you especially thank you to uh, Craig uh, uh, Craig contributes two talks for us yes well, well and, yeah you're saying you're saying thank you now but you don't know what I'm gonna say so we'll find <laughs> 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 and and you you have to translate for me so that's going to be I that's going to be the amusing part for me is that you're going to be translating on the fly so I, I'm well, maybe you can learn Chinese <laughs> <laughs> right well I mean I could take the burden off you by speaking Chinese but I don't think anybody wants that. Um, so we'll, we'll, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But th thanks for the update, uh, uh, Jesse. And if anyone is looking to learn more about uh, the group and the work that uh, Jesse and her colleagues are doing, um, are doing in uh, the area of um, of XAPI uh, in in uh, in Taiwan, and particularly the program that they have, you can check out the presentation that they did at the boot camp. It's listed on screen, uh, or contact them for more information. Thanks. Yeah, um, and also I, I have some interesting question about uh, recipes because, oh, um, okay. uh, yeah, I, I'm going to write a recipe for uh, the case in a cross X project. And sorry, it took me so long to start to write this. I oh no, you, that's <laughs> no. I mean, you don't have to apologize for taking time. I'm pretty sure that you you, you sound like a very busy person, Jesse. So I appreciate that you, you even got started on it. Yeah. So, um, oh, so first of all, I thank uh, uh, thank Jason to take care of our vocabulary uh, because our vocabulary is not, actually not specific Chinese culture specific. It's general case. So Jason is taking care of those vocabularies to put them into P U I L. Ah. Uh huh. And uh, for recipes, my question is, uh, I, I've heard of profile, I also heard of someone call them recipes, is the, which terms are uh, more correct? That's, a, that's actually a really good question, especially for this, uh, for this gathering. I'm going to toss that over to either uh, Jason or Andy if they want to. Andy, take a shot at it. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Sure. Okay, so let me take a shot at that. So recipe is kind of... A piece, I'd say a recipe would fall under a piece of a profile. A profile is meant to be something that's used by an entire community that really gets at how they do business. Um, it gets at the ground rules of what that community believes, and it, it's pretty, I would say, integrated into culturally what they do. A recipe is a much smaller thing, and it's a specific way something is done. So let's say um, we had talked about this. Um, even before they are called recipes, um, if you want to use a verb, the word, uh, let's say you want to use a verb in a particular community of practice. So in CMI 5, for example, we have a verb called abandoned. Now, abandoned can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts, but in the CMI 5 context, it's talking about a session within an LMS that ends abruptly and neither side is aware of how that communication ended. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you could define a recipe around that. You would say, okay, well, if it's abandoned, it's not something that I can, I can't declare an abandoned and then do another action, let's say, five seconds later, um, because that's not really what abandoned is. Abandoned is the expectation that something bad happened, um, and, and that's how it's to be used. And you would define different rules around that. Um, so you might say you might allow certain results. You might not allow certain results. Um, you might have different other behaviors that are associated with it. Um, similarly, if you had recipes around, um, what's one of them they're using? They're talking about doing recipes around the attended verb. Um, so what does it mean to attend something? Does it mean you show up? 
and at that point you've attended, does it mean you stay the entire time? Would that be attended? Let's say, or maybe you have to show up, um, perform five actions within that particular period of time, uh, or pass five certain uh, progress checks or um, attendance checks, and then you're there. So I mean, it, the recipes get very specific into what um, is allowed within a very small um, confine, so like a, like a verb or an activity or even a, a result or an extension. So um, profile contains many recipes, is that correct? It, it might. It's a, profile doesn't have to have recipes, but we would expect it has rules. Recipe is kind of a, 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 a it's coined by a RustTC software, and it certainly is uh, usable in that way, but I'd call them profile pieces. Um, you can call them recipes if you want, um, but you don't need recipes to make a profile. Oh, uh, okay. so recipe is very specific, and so the rule is very specific for a situation like CMI5, right? Right, so yeah, so CMI5 is one of those where if we called them recipes, there would definitely be recipes in CMI5. Um, for each verb, I'd say we have certain recipes that are set out. Uh, we don't call them recipes, we just call them parts of the profile. But if you wanted to rip one of those out, you would probably call it a recipe, and if you wanted to use it somewhere else. Okay, so for example, uh, assessment is a kind of, uh, we should have some profile for assessment. But assessment has many, many things, yeah. and many, yep. many We're different things. So, so every group called the H, I think it's called HROS. Um, there, that's a group that used to be the uh, HXML group. I'm missing letters in there. HRXML group. Um, they're going after creating a profile in XAPI around assessment. Uh, what's the group name? Sorry. HROS. HROS. So it's a COP. It, it's not a COP yet, but we're talking about it with the actual group. We're looking to collaborate with them, and. Uh -huh. They're supposed to approach um, Aaron um, and the other, and there's a lot of our other members on it. Rust TC's on it. Uh, I think Saltbox has some representatives on it. Um, but yeah, there's, it's a it's a large group that's working together to kind of start a new profile around assessment data. Mm -hmm. so, so, if I say uh, assessment is a profile, then uh, each kind of assessment will be a recipe. Is it, it could be a recipe if you wanted to talk about it. So if if the, if we if the HRS people define an entire profile and you wanted to take and let's say you like the way they do multiple choice questions, um, that might that type of activity might be a recipe. Yeah, yeah, and and even in multi multiple choice question, it, there could be different settings. So you should specify yeah. the time limit and how many times the learner can try. And etc. Right. So this is a recipe for a specified detail parameters, right? Oh, did I? Did we lose audio there? Hello. I think we might have lost. Uh... Yeah, it broke. Uh, so, hmm. hold on just a moment. <clears throat> huh? Weird. I think we may have lost. Uh, we may have lost Andy's audio there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think can you. Got... Oh okay. yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I was. Done. Oh, you just cut out again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about. Sorry about that. I have well, another question. Sure. Uh, for example, I saw there is a like it might be a very early case of a recipe is about video. Yeah, and it's good that I saw video COP leader is here. Um, this video recipe is not enough for our case because uh, in our case uh, there will be quiz and 
note taking. You can do note taking inside the video. And that they are not included in the recipe. So what's your suggestion to handle this? Uh, what's the suggestion basically to handle um, the function of note taking in, the, in within a video? Yeah, note taking, highlighting, and also uh, quiz embedded. That's um, a, well, the first thing I, I mean, I would imagine uh, kind of to approach both the the video community of practice because I think that's something that's been broached by that particular group. Hold on. What do we got here? Oh, okay, I see. And it's uh, get out there. But uh, yeah, that's that's if if that is uh, that's what I would recommend. It basically, what ideally what would happen is that uh, within that particular within that particular domain, that uh, subject is already I, I think under discussion. If I'm I may be talking out of turn, uh, Pankaj, if, if you if you understand differently about that. But um. But my understanding is that, that that sort of thing is actually being kind of discussed by that group. So I, I probably would check with them to see what the, uh, to kind of get into line with what they're doing. Pankaj, does that sound correct? Uh, so, for... um, so should I ask uh, Pankaj to release a, a more detailed version of video recipe, or I just create a, an, another version? Well, I would... So this is a really this is a, that's a really good question, Jesse. So my understanding would be that we'd want to actually kind of collaborate between the COPs to incorporate your use case into the work that they're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry, Pat. Yeah, if there is any conflict, yeah, it, it might be best to resolve uh, and uh, go go together. Yeah, but but you know that that's a good point though. Um, this is fortunately you guys know about the work that you're doing you know something that we're going to run into um a lot more probably sooner rather than we'd like is that people are going to come up with innovations and uh start different uh recipes or or, or domain profiles um associated with different domains and may or may not be aware of each other um, until some development has been done so um, I know that that's something that Jason, for example, has been talking about within the vocabulary group, um, because that's something that you know we're trying to prevent by making sure that everyone's aware of of the vocabulary that's been created and uh, you know what the what the particular meaning for each of the verbs used are. Yeah, but it might be best if we if it converges together as uh, this UP is released. Uh, even our personal product, uh, GrassBlade X API Companion, has a video integration, and uh, the verbs that are used will uh, completely conflict with uh, what we are doing with video COP. And uh, mm. we'll have to uh, move ahead and uh, modify things in, in the, the product that we have personally. but. Uh, at the end, we have to look uh, at the greater interest and uh, see that whatever we build as a COP works for everyone. All right, I, I kind of want, you know, it's funny, I, I kind of want to, hmm, we need to talk more about this, I think. Oh, sorry about that. We need to talk more about this, I think, um, because I think Jessie brings up, you know, her particular situation is not going to be unique. It's going to... This is going to happen more and more often. So, um, all right, guys. Oh, sorry, Jesse. Did, so, did that answer your question? I, I apologize, and it was sort of off on a tangent. Uh, so, so maybe I will talk more with uh, Pancake later. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Well, well, thanks for the update. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we need to actually kind of to, and maybe we need to take this back to the community of practice uh, Google group. But I'd kind of like to have this discussion preserved, although I suppose we're recording it right now, so there's that. Um, but it's something we kind of need to get uh, deeper into, so we'll see. All right. Uh, yeah, I, can, <laughs> I think that was uh, Pankaj's daughter at the end trying to participate, which I, I appreciate her, her enthusiasm, Pankaj. All right. Um, 
you know, someone mentioned, or I think Pankaj actually asked earlier if the uh, SCORM uh, X API, the, sorry, the Experience API SCORM profile ex still existed. Uh, it does exist. Um, and so it's available here uh, via the link. Although uh, they did not present at the boot camp, um, the people who were associated with it, Tom Crichton and uh, John O. Poltrak, were there. Um, actually, if, Andy, if you don't mind, actually, if you can, I'm not sure if you can, I, I may or not be able to comment now, but I know that this comes up every once in a while. Um, is there, what is the situation, or if you can talk about it, the situation involving the XAPI scoring profile versus uh, the development of CMI5? Well, we're really trying to get everything harmonized. And, um, you know, the SCORM profile is meant to be from people who are starting with SCORM and are kind of tied to that solution, mm -hmm. whereas CMI5 is something we are more comfortable with people starting out who may have a SCORM background but aren't necessarily tied to that architecture. Right. Um, we still kind of have some internal things to work out about messaging, but I can tell you we're going to be making some CMI5 um, real example soon, just like the SCORM profile has, and kind of leave it out to people to see which one they want, and you know they can they can see for themselves which one's going to be better. Um, but it's, we're trying to have them conf not conflict either, so it's going to be kind of a challenge because they were started with two separate use cases in mind, but re and really they overlap about 90%. So we're really going to make sure that 90% works mm. um, between the two. And then we've got to be really careful with how we talk about the differences because there's really not that much that's different. Right, right. I mean, this is this is something that um, it's it's not that it is. How do I say? It's not something that is you know kind of super pressing at the moment. I think more people know about CMI five than know about the Experience API uh, score and profile. However, as time goes on and you know as we kind of get our messaging done differently, we'll definitely have to kind of get that straight. So thanks, Andy. All right. Um, uh, you know what? We're jumping right into CMI5, so I might as well keep you on. Uh, Andy, why don't you tell me about what's up with CMI5 right now? Okay. So right now we are mostly pushing the um, the adoption phase of this. Uh, we're we're pretty clear on what the the various technical pieces are. Mm -hmm. So we're working to try to find ways to get tool vendors to start adopting CMI5. A lot of times we're seeing this chicken and the egg problem where you know, the, the tool vendors aren't going to implement it until it's more stable and people want it. People don't know they want it until they see it in their tools. Right. So we're, we're trying to work the marketing side of that. Um, the thinking last week, we, we decided that the best way that we can use our time weekly, um, in addition to strategizing um, how, who we can work with, is to push the conformance testing piece of this forward. So we figure if there is more of a um, set way that you either pass or fail CMI5, that uh, that could help drive um, vendors and people to wanting it uh, more than they have in the past. And then on the ADL side, of course, we need to start building content examples to make it more real. Um, you know, if if you've got somebody to show you how it's done, it's so much easier than putting it down in a document. Yeah, that that's definitely true. Um, I know that uh, you and uh, actually quite a few people associated with the uh, the development of CMI5 are going to be at. Uh, at DevLearn later this year. Actually, I'll be there as well, but I'm only tangentially associated with CMI5. Um, so if you guys, if anyone on the call or on you know, watching this later is going to be at, at DevLearn, uh, Andy Johnson will be uh, there and he, you can catch up with him and talk about CMI5. He will, he, will, he will give you all the information. Before we move on from CMI5, though, I wanted to address some comments that uh, Pankaj made in, in the chat window or in the chat over here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and let, I'm going to go ahead and unmute him so he can ask those questions himself if you'd like. Yeah, uh, I I feel that uh, CMI5 and SCORM profile are completely different. CMI5 talks about launch and integration with the LMS, but uh, SCORM profile is almost completely about assessments, questions, answers, and uh, CMI5 doesn't talk about questions, answers, and how to uh, write statements for questions and answers. So. I feel they are completely different. Uh, it is just that SCORM, SCORM profile uh, references a document that we have currently for launching a content. So uh, it just talks about existing way to launch the content. Apart from that, SCORM profile is not about launch. It is almost entirely about uh, uh, assessments. 
Right, and I can certainly see that because, I, I be, but be aware that because CMI five knows it doesn't have to talk about the parts of assessment because the X API spec has some of that in there, that they're not going to. Whereas the SCORM profile has an exact need to map every single element uh, of SCORM, and that's that's one of the two different major differences that you're hitting on, Pankaj, is that. CMI5 has no responsibility to map all of those particular elements um, in, in how to do assessment, so it's going to be much easier to adopt a profile such as that the, uh, the HRLS group might come up with. So if, they, if the HRLS group comes up with a profile, it's going to fit into CMI5 really nicely, whereas because the SCORM profile has to store things in certain fields in certain places, it might be a little more rigid that way. Um, so, but yeah, you're right. It does, that is one of the major differences. And although CMI, although the SCORM profile doesn't talk about a launch, it it's kind of assumed that pretty, most people that are using it are probably going to find the one launch spec that's currently out there, which is that CMI five launch, um, which was a launch protocol that uh, Ben Clark had come up with earlier, and it's kind of still floating around as the de facto one. So, it, yeah, it doesn't have it, but it's close. Based on my understanding, if uh, you use the SCORM profile to write statements for assessment, you can put uh, put the entire profile inside a CMI5 uh, package. So if there is an assessment launched using CMI5, it could use all the CMI5 statements and uh, inside the package, it could have uh, all the SCORM profile statements go through nicely without any problem. I, I would think so. We have not done that exercise technically, but in my crosswalk of the two, I didn't see anything that would cause that to break either. But we still have some weird behaviors that we're forced to replicate in the SCORM profile um, with, mm -hmm. in regards to session management and um, granularity. So like you. For okay. example, you need a learner pro you need a learner preference language on every mm -hmm. single um, SCO, whereas okay. in CMI five we might say that well that's that's an actor or an agent profile setting. Um, Andy Johnson would always prefer you know English as a first language, Chinese as a second language, or or however, whereas that's done at the SCO level in the SCORM profile, which stuff like that that we don't really yeah. want around anymore is kind of tedious and stuck. So they both have their benefits. No, don't get me wrong. And, and they, they serve different purposes. Um, but I'm hoping we can get to the point where they largely overlap. And as, as Pankaj describes, putting one inside of the other is not very uh, not a, a task that breaks either of them. Yeah. yeah uh, one thing that worries me is that uh, we already have contents like Articulate and Captivate and Lectora is Spring. All these vendors are already having assessment that write to LRS, and uh, a lot of people are already using the TinCan API and writing statements to LRS. And uh, we have this corn profile coming up, and then we'll have HROS coming up. And uh, if all these three conflict with each other, uh, we'll have a nightmare uh, tomorrow when we have three different types of statements coming to the same LRS um, for the same thing, assessments. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We need to manage and that. Time. Writing reports would be uh, a very tough task. All right. I, I kind of want to, this is another one of the kind of threads I want to kind of see to come to resolution uh, in the coming months. So um, like I said, we can probably continue this conversation um, on the Google group but or in person, depending on who's going to be uh, in different places in the next few months. So thanks, guys. All right. Um, so the next few things are not actually communities of practice that are actually, um, you know, these are more uh, domains in search of a community. So, but I keep mentioning them because I keep hoping someone will pick them up and run with them because I think it would be interesting to see people kind of work on these. So if you're not aware, uh, I think the company, uh, I think TES, uh, was involved in creating a continuing education credit uh, for accountants, uh, I guess, to a recipe. So this is available at the URL that I have on screen. Uh, if you have any questions, contact the, uh, the 
email address on screen, or write to Andrew Downs. Um, if you don't know how to contact him, I think if you say his name three times, he will appear, or he'll come over your uh, computer speakers. Um, or you can just, you know, email me and I'll connect you to it. But um, I keep hoping someone, like I said, will take it on. Um, educational credit is something that I think would, you know, be a good test case, especially for accountants, um, for somebody who's looking for, to apply this or XAPI to this. So um, if you're interested, let them know. And I think we were talking about this a bit earlier. So Tess also worked on the uh, an attendance uh, recipe. So, uh, and I think as, a, as uh, both Andy and Jesse sort of mentioned, um, you know, stuff that's done in this particular uh, recipe or with it could affect uh, or might conflict with stuff that's being done in other um, control vocabularies or recipes. So uh, if you're interested or if you'd like to, to work on this, go ahead and contact the, uh, the URLs on screen, uh, the email address the URL, or contact Andrew Downs, and he will hook you up. Uh, I think that's it. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, you know what? I want to, before we go, I want to address uh, a question from Jesse, but I wanted to say it so everyone hears. Jesse, your, your, your mic is open. Go ahead. Um, just about the assessment uh, question. Um, uh, um, I, well, I, I know uh, you mentioned there are some groups uh, working on it, but it, it, I think it's a kind of urgent. So um, well, uh, how about your advice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically the question would be, um, like basically, you know, this is becoming more and more important. You know, we need to, f to figure out how um, assessment uh, of different profiles of recipes are going to be handled, or if there are going to be any particular communities of practice directly associated with assessment. Is that correct? Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know. That's something. That's something that we should. Um, that's something we should actually kind of take on. Um, and I, I, I kind of have to talk with that uh, about that with my colleagues, with uh, Andy and Jason, to see what our plans are going to be for that. Um, but I agree, yeah. Jesse. That's it's going to become more urgent soon. So we do we do definitely need to get on that and kind of provide it's some direction to the community. Extremely urgent, and Aaron, that's why Aaron Silvers has kind of identified it as his, you know, his thing he's going after next. So I think he's going to be really helpful pushing that. We need, you're, and you're right. We need to get more ADL resources on that. Just, yeah. Certainly short on ideal resources. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely, uh, yeah, that's that's unfortunately the point, uh, uh, Andy. Put it really succinctly. We we definitely need to put ADL on that, but like we're a lot of ADL right now. So if we could start cloning ourselves, that would be awesome. I have a pretty big office, so I could actually fit a, a good number of people in here. So, um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Um, I'm really thankful for the discussion we've had, and I'd like to continue it in Google Group or uh, other places online, so if we can capture that. Uh, I think we'll, we'll be meeting this time, I guess the what, second week in uh, September. Um, I think we'll, some of us will be just back from, uh, from DevLearn at that time, so looking forward to that. So, uh, so yeah, guys, I will talk to you soon.